Hallelujah. Amen. So, very powerful. Um, let's turn our Bibles quickly. And um, this morning, we're teaching about how to pray for a breakthrough. And someone says, oh, I, I thought that's a simple thing. It could be a simple thing. How to pray for a breakthrough. James chapter 5 in verse 16. James chapter 5 in verse 16. It says, confess your fault one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. And it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, that will be the cross of our context today. But in this particular service, this, we we're going to go further in the second, third, and fourth service. In this particular service, I want to talk about this. Why does prayer have delays? Why does prayer have delays? And someone says, why is it important to pray for a breakthrough? And this is the reason why. I don't know how many of you have maybe the iPhone or the Android phone. Did you notice to know how to use the iPhone or Android phone, you needed someone to train you? How many of you noticed that? Not like sitting down. There will be times in your conversation that someone will say, oh, do you know your phone can do this? Do you know your phone can do that? Has that happened? The reason why I'm saying so is that if you need someone to guide you on how to use something as basic as a phone from time to time, why do you think that just because you, you pray, you don't need someone to guide you on how to be very effective in prayer? And that's the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge is this, that most people haven't found someone that has taught them about how to pray. So this is what we do. We pray the way we think is right. For example, every time a car doesn't start well, a proper Nigerian, what do we do? We open the bullet and touch the battery. Even if the problem has nothing to do what? with the battery. But it's just the way we're wired. So, people say, I pray, why is God not answering? The question is not that do you pray. The question that prayer is not magic. It's based on principle. How do you pray in such a way that is effective and you can get the results? So, that's what we're teaching about all through today. So, the first thing we want to talk about, uh, let's understand the reason for delaying prayer. So, the first thing is this. Why are there delays in prayer? The first thing. Exodus chapter 22 verse 30. This is going to bless you. Why are there delays in prayer? Exodus chapter 22. Let me just. Hallelujah. What is it? Twenty three thirty, yeah, twenty three thirty. Thank you. Thank you. I knew it was not 22 because I saw the wrong thing here. Exodus 23, 30. Yeah. Exodus 23, 30. So, why is that delay in prayer? So, the reason why I'm saying so is that if you can know why your prayer is delayed, then maybe you know what to do. See what the Bible says. Let's read together. This will help us together. Want to go? By little and little, I will drive them out before thee until the land is increased and you what? Inherit the land. Can you flip back to verse 29? Verse 29, let's, let's take it because, yeah, let's ref, 29, it's to give you a context. So the context of this is this. What's the context? God had promised them, I will give you the whole of the land. Some of you, God has promised you that I will make you a bank MD. God has promised you that your company is going to go to $10 million per annum. God has promised you you're going to have a great marriage. The question is that, why don't you have it right now? You're praying, why don't you have it? Watch this now. Because this is the frustration that... I'm praying about what God has said to me, but why don't I have it right now? See what the Bible says here. Verse 29. God had promised Israel, I will give you all of this land. See what it says. One, two, go. Let's read. I will not drop them out before they one year, lest the land become 
desolate and the beast of the field God says that hey I will not give you the breakthrough in one year are you going to say God why he said because if I give you the breakthrough in one year you will not be able to take advantage of it he says, I will not drive them out before the all of the lands I want to give you. I will not drive them out in one year, lest the land become the same. And guess what? The problem with you not having capacity is that new problems will arise. He says, I will not drive them out before you in one year, lest the field become desolate. So you're wondering. So the reason why God has not given you that great man that should marry you is this. He knows the way you are. You will destroy it. The reason why God has not given the, that kind of woman you want, he knows the way you are right now, you will destroy it. The reason why God has not given you, you know, the reason why that finance, I know you're praying for this $1 million deal, and God is busy sending you 200000 and one, one, 1 million, and you say, Lord, I want something big. And God says, I know, but the reason why is that you don't have capacity. The principle is there, capacity limits prayer. That's the principle. What? Capacity does what? Limits prayer. See what it says here. He says, I will not drop them out before thee in one year, lest the land should become desolate and the beasts of a field multiply against it. Verse 30 now. Verse 30. Let's go. Verse, and what? By little and little, I will... Let me show you. Chima, come. Let me show you what little by little means. This is what it means. Stay where you are. I want to take just one huge step towards me. So this is all that God has for you. When Chima grows... Take another step towards me. He's taking it. Then God will take another step. Give him more to occupy. Take another step. God says, give him more. Take another step. Take another step. God says, give him more. Question, who determines the answer prayer? It's him, not God. God says, when you develop capacity and take one more step, I will give you more to take one more step. Go back. Let's do this again. Let's think of this in terms of finances. Father, I need 100 million. God says, yeah, I have 100 million. But what you can handle is what? 500,000. And you stay here. And God says, and you say, God, I can do, and you pray. And it's not about praying. It's what your capacity can handle. So all of a sudden, you have capacity for 500,000. Do 500,000. And God says, oh, that's good. He's done well. Okay, angels, 2 million. Then you do 2 million. Angels, okay, 10 million. Then you do 10 million. Then angels, 20 million. Then you do 20 million. The major thing is that most of us are praying for things there's no capacity for. Should I give an example? A lot of people are praying for financial miracles. They don't even have a current account. Like, where would the money come into? You don't even have, you don't understand. You say, Father, I received 10 million. You don't even have an active current account. Where would the money come into? You need to ask yourself, you need to be sincere with yourself. The things I'm praying for, do I have the capacity for it? Or else you are a joker. Did you look at, did you look at the woman that the oil multiplied when Elisha ministered to her? The Bible says the oil multiplied until what? There was no other vessel. A capacity, a capacity limited a miracle. Could it be it's your capacity that's limiting your miracle? I want you to write it down somewhere. This is a good question for you to take home today. Could it be that it's your capacity that is limiting your prayers? Praise God. Thank you. Could it be that it's your capacity? For example, I don't know if you know this. The Bible says that a woman that gets angry a lot is very difficult to live with. Could that be what is destroying your relationship? What did the Bible say about the man? It says, any place where the man acts like a child, it says the place is cursed. Could that be the reason why you're not married? Because you're a mommy's boy? Do you know how many people are praying? See, you know, um, my brother over there was trying to tell me about some investment. He was asking about someone else in church because... Well, just for you to know, we have this growth class called Revolution Masterclass. It's an eight-week intensive. It's, helped to main, it's meant to challenge you to grow. 
in your life as a person and to grow spiritually. It's called Revolution Masterclass. It's eight classes. The class is always full of people. Some of them are doing business in the billions. Some of them are doing hundreds of millions. Some of them are like 100,000. So we always have it like that. And that's why I say there are different kind of meetings. So I'll say, how do you get in? You have to be interviewed. We want a certain quality in the class. You have to be interviewed. So when the class, people always meet each other. So one person had met him and needed a deal for, I think, 300 million and uh, 300 millionaire deal and the investment. And he was, brother was asking me, he said, Pastor, do you know this person? I said, I know him. He said, do you think my money will come back? I said, well, he's a great guy. But you don't invest 300 million because one is a great guy. You look at paperwork. Yes or no? Yes. Question, you're praying for funding. Do you have paperwork? If they tell you, what was your profit and loss last year? What's your financial projection for next year? But instead of you to pray paperwork, Father, come, work. And God says, please develop capacity. Develop capacity. Develop capacity. Do you know how many businesses you just tell them, just bring your income statement. Let me see how your cash flow is. And they can't produce that because they always collect the money cash. One of the principles we had from the inception of this church is this. Before any money is spent, it must be banked. It's one of the principles we had. Before any money is spent, it must be banked. Capacity. And that's why as you pray, you need to ask yourself, do I have the capacity for what I'm praying for? Why, why, why do people explain? So you can see that. They, can you provide the scripture again? No, let, let, let's read it again from verse 29. Maybe it will make more sense now. See what about, you know, capacity is so important. This story comes to mind. It's not even a Christian story. It's a secular story. Do you know about um, Steve Jobs? Steve Jobs told the Apple and he was kicked out of Apple. Did you know that also? Because by the time Apple began to grow, it grew beyond its capacity and he began to use his hand to destroy it. So for them to save the company, they threw him out. They brought him back many years after when his capacity had now what developed and he was able to take it to another level. Once you don't have capacity for something and God gives it to you, your destiny becomes the destiny of the prodigal son. What is given to you destroys you. Once you don't have capacity you, and you get a blessing, your destiny becomes like the prodigal son. What is given to you destroys you. Capacity is very, is very big. So you think that it's God that is not answering your prayers? But really, it's you that have not developed the capacity for your prayers to be answered. See what it says here. It says, I will not drive them out before you in one year. He says, because God knows I know you don't have that capacity. He says, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field. Because if God gives you without capacity, it's going to create another problem. He said, let the lands become desolate against, um, and the beasts of the field multiply against you. So there was enemies there before. Now you have other enemies because you don't have capacity. You know, because, oh my God, can, can I help you? Can I, can I challenge you? One of my members was telling me he had a problem with the FCC. So, you know, I was concerned. I said, he said, Pastor, don't worry, it's EFCC. He said, if EFCC have not arrested you, you have not made money in Nigeria. I said, who told you this? He now told me another rich person I know. He said, no, no, no. It's a common thing. No. He, said, he said, which bank MD has not stepped in the FCC before? He said, is he Ike? Is he Ote Dola? He said, everybody has slept there. He said, it's something. He said, the way you know you're making money in Nigeria is that you have to go to the FCC. He said, they have to come for their own share. They have to come. So, but you now, ordinary Lagos, they see your building. God, God, why are you embarrassing me? God, you, you don't even have capacity. You don't even, your, your, your approach towards problems. So the guy said, Pastor, don't worry. I will go and greet them. You know, I, I, if they want to give me best space, give me best space. I will go and come back. It's normal. He said, everybody ahead of me went there. So why can I escape my own? Just imagine the way they respond to a very tough problem. Just imagine that emotional capacity, the way they respond to a tough problem. Just imagine the perspective he has. You are dying. He's laughing. Glory to God. He says, but little by little I will drive them out before thee. So what determines how it drives them out? The more you grow, the more he drives them out. Until, see what it says. It says, why little by little? Until you are increased and what? 
and inherit the land. So once you are able to increase and inherit the land, you'll have a miracle. So the one reason why people struggle with answer prayers is because of the day. The second reason is this. Is, is this helpful this morning? Who can identify with this? Who can identify with this? You, you know the thing, I will be honest with you. A lot of things I prayed for that I thought did not happen, they later happened in my life when I was not praying for them. You know why? By the time I prayed, God heard, but I did not have capacity. When capacity came, I did not need to pray. The prayer was already pending in my account. All I needed was capacity to receive it. That's why some of you, you just say something will just happen. You say, ah, but I've stopped praying for this. Mm -mm. The prayer has been an answered since. Only that is a pending transaction. It's pending because you don't have capacity. So, as soon as capacity comes, you just see credit a lot. Bam! Glory to God. This is so good. This is so good. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. The second reason why, the second reason why people say their prayer is delayed is because of lack of action. James chapter 2. And Pentecostals, this is our major problem. Oh, Pentecostals. Hey. Hey, hey. James chapter 2. Oh, wow. James chapter 2. Verse 18. Let's read from verse 17. It says, then, if so faith, if it had not works, is dead. It says, faith without works is dead being alone. That's what I'm going to. Verse 17. It says, faith without works is what? Dead being alone. The question I want to ask is this. If you're praying for something, do I, am I doing corresponding actions? I'll give an example. Um, by the way, all of you watching online, this, this evening we have a, a, a Zoom private interactive link for all of you from the UK and Europe. So they will, we'll put it up and you can join. So one time I was praying, I think it was last week, with some group of people on Zoom. And one lady said, Pastor, I want to pray for marital breakthrough. I said, I don't know what that means. Because one of the principles of prayer is that it needs to be specific. What's marital breakthrough? It may mean that you have a good, um, that, that your husband will be okay. I don't know what does. Why can't you say what you want? There's nothing called marital breakthrough. It's too broad. So I said, What do you want? He said, Oh, um, I want to be in a relationship. I said, Great. I said, When last did you date? He said, Maybe three or four years ago. I said, That's not what you want. You want to have people attracted to you first so that you can be in a relationship. Because when they can't come, how will you be there? Okay. So she said to me, You know, um, um, that she wants to be in a relationship, she wants people to come. I said, good. I said, so when last did you, I said, I said when last, he said, this year, what has toasted you? She said, probably no one. He said, this is like maybe one year. I said, hey, this is a strange problem. Oh. <laughs> but before I conclude if it's spiritual or not, I have to ask more questions. And I said, okay, um, have you positioned yourself where people can find you? I said, pastor, yes. I said, how? Then she could not talk. I said, what do you do? He said, I work online. Hmm. No wonder you can't be found. <laughs> that means that every day, you stay where? You stay at home. The person that will marry you, where will he find you? In your house. Well done. <laughs> but she's busy. Mara, Shaba, I call my husband. My husband will see me. Where will he see you? In the house. And I now say, where do you meet people? Mm, he said, I don't really meet people. That's what I said. And I said, okay, well, online is a meeting space. Why not, since you know online, you do online marketing, why not push yourself online? He said, I do that. I said, that's good. Let me just check, be sure what you're doing. Give me your Instagram name. I can't remember. I said, my sister, you're going to be single forever if you continue this way. I said, you are home? Online, you're not positioning? How will you be found? I, you know, there's a big joke in our church. I always say that, how can you be a single girl that wants a relationship and you have a closed Instagram page? What are you closing it for? If your husband is there, I will have toasted you since. You need to open it so they can find you. Are you here? See, people are praying and there's no action 
to back up their prayer. And the Bible says it this way. It says, faith without works is dead. You are praying for contract. Ever look at me. I love I pray for contract. Look at me. Have you asked yourself how they get contract? Nobody gets contract by prayer. <laughs> Have you discovered that? That, oh, how did you get to, As I was praying, the contract just came. I just saw a paper and I signed it. No! People get contract by relationships. Yes or no? Yes. Why are you not in the Koyi club? Why are you not in the Koyi club? All the people that will give you the contract are there. Why are you not in some other association? But what we want to do, because it's a Pentecostal thing. It's, it's the way we're trained. Just pray and do nothing. No, sir. You need to pray and do something. So, let's say you want to get married. If I were you, I want to get married. I will be in the most visible places. If I join a church, I will join the Ocean of Greatest Unit, most visible unit. If I was a single person, I want to get married as a lady or a guy. Every week, every week or three days, I'll post a new picture of me doing something valuable. This is what unbelievers understand. Unbelievers, every day they post their breasts. When they don't post their breasts, they post their bum bum. You think they are stupid. You say, look at this girl. She knows what she's doing. She's calling for them. She's calling. She knows what they want. She's calling. Come, 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 come. You know, but born again. So, you know what I will post? I want a godly person. I will show myself in church worshiping. Oh, wow. This girl is actually a very good person. I will show myself. You know, I will show myself. We went to this beach and we had this nice swimming. I will show myself in the beach swimming. Oh, wow. This girl actually has nice body. Praise God. I will show myself actually cooking. Ah, this girl is responsible. She cooks. Before you know it, they will start DMing you. It's on the shouting pastor. <laughs> Before you know it, they start DMing you. Same thing with the men. Because it's not a woman's story alone. Same thing with the men. Many of you are here. There's LinkedIn and your LinkedIn is empty. Useless. It's empty and useless. And you say, I'm looking for a job. What story do you put on your LinkedIn? You just put your name. Victor Abaja. Uh, human resource. No story. This is the ch- And I'm saying this because, you know what? One of the things that compelled me with Next Level Prayer is this. I was just tired of people feeling God is not faithful. And when you hear that story, it's not as if God is not faithful. They have not done what they should do in addition to their prayers. Yesterday, we had the meeting for the U.S. And, and this happens all the time. So, someone told me, he said, Pastor, I wanted to pray. Someone said, I want business breakthrough. I said, what do you want? I want more sales. I said, that's great. I said, what do you to bring in more sales? Do you have a marketing plan? I said, no. I said, when you pray, don't you know you inform the angels but not the human beings? When you pray, shab, blah, 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 blah. all the angels know what you are selling. But angels don't buy your product. The human beings that buy your product, they need someone to market to them. You don't have a marketing plan. So yesterday when we had the meeting, a lady said she wanted to break you for her business. You know, I don't know what that means. You know, people always say all these kind of things. I don't know what that means. You know, and I always tell you something. Once your, once your prayer point is confusing, even the angel will be confused. Because the angel does not read your mind. Is I want to break through my business. Okay, that's fine. I said, what exactly? I said, what do you want in your business? I said, that, um, I do real estate in the U.S. He says, and I want sales to go up. I said, so why do you think sales is going down? It, it, of course, I knew the reason why. He said, because in the U.S., they've raised the interest rates. So it's very expensive to buy a house right now because you pay more. I said, that's great. I said, so it's a natural cost, right? Yes. So this is the, re- this is the season where your sales will go down because interest rates have been raised up. I said, that's the season... What should you be praying about? Should you pray that God will increase your sales because that means he has to change the law for you? Or will you pray that God will show you more opportunities around real estate so that you can make more money? How are you praying? How are you praying? Jesus Christ went to heal a child. And when he healed the child, you know what he told the child? He said, give him food to eat. You know what that meant to me? One of the things that killed her was starvation. So before she dies again, give her food to eat. 
I'm telling you, one of the things, for one reason or the other, why did he say give her food to eat? Because he didn't say so in all instances. He said so in this instance. I believe that because maybe her sickness made sure she could not eat. Just, I'll give an example. Let me, and it's, it's good to address this. Someone is healed of diabetes. And the person goes back to eating sugar. It's not a cause. The diabetes will come back. The reason why is that something caused the attack in the first place. And that thing, because you were healed, does not mean it has slept. He's looking for a way to come back into your body. So if you go back to doing that thing, the attack will come back. And this is why you see a lot of people that are healed, they lose their healing. Because they go back to what made them sick before. I've been healed of some things, but I don't go back to what caused it. Because if I go back to what caused it, I will bring back the healing. I will bring back the sickness. Glory to God. Wow. Have you been blessed already today? Are you seeing the gaps in your prayers? Are you seeing the gaps? So, the third thing, this is the most familiar one people, like, people have problems with. You know, why are you, you know, um, and, yeah. Someone says, what do we do? So, Pastor G is going to demolish the whole thing by telling us how to pray, and it's going to be really powerful, you know. But let me just say this quickly. Let me just say this quickly. How does God answer your prayers? Everybody look at me. Hebrews says, be careful to entertain strangers. He said, because some unknowingly entertain what? Angels. God answers your prayer through people. Be sensitive. The brother that spoke, did you hear what he said? Thank my brother Chisum that invited me. Come, my brother, the pastor from the UK. Let's have a conversation. I, I wanted to watch how this works because this is the missing link in your prayer point. This is how you destroy it. Yeah. So, let, you know, just look at the camera. I just got to those that are here. Um, what you experienced yesterday has been something you've been hungry for or praying for. Yes or no? Huh? Let's make sure the microphone is on. It, you, don't, you always need to turn it on before you give it to them. Yeah. Yes, sir. You've been praying and then watch this now. He's been praying and desirous that this will happen to him. But the way it will happen, that is the hand of God. And God now told his friend, because he's meant to be going to the UK. Ah, since you are here now, come for a church program. If he was not sensitive to recognize that was a spiritual thing and he came, he would have been back to the UK kept praying, not knowing the answer was there, and I walked past it. When you had the meeting, how did you feel? You, you felt, this is what I've been looking for. Because in his word, I don't know if you heard him what he said earlier on in the service. He said, this is a training I've been asking for, or I didn't even know I needed. One of the ways you must realize, you know, let me ask you, if you, and you know the nature of ignorance, eh? you don't even miss it because you don't know what you missed. If you didn't come, will you have? As a matter of fact, I was, I had, because I came to Nigeria for, mini, for missionary uh, jobs. Yeah. So I had gone to Abuja and I went to Port Harcourt. Yeah. So I had finished everything I needed to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I needed to be here. I was just, you know what, I'll go to Lagos, spend a whole week and then fly back. And then he said, come. And then I came and everything was just a total turnaround. Look at that. Thank you, sir. See, this, this is what I'm saying. Are you sensitive? To the relationships. Because you must understand, how does God answer our prayer? God answers our prayers through people. The question is that, are you sensitive enough to hear and sense those people? You know, I, I, I've said this story many times, but I'll say it again. We were thinking of my child when he was going to secondary school. That he will school and he will travel and maybe school in the UK or the US in the boarding school. So, because I went to a boarding school, I thought it was a great experience. You know, so we're thinking, I'd always said when I was young, my children would go to a boarding school, I'd always said it. So, you know, you know, because it was it worked out for me. But when it was time, I just felt, okay, let's pray about this. Let's pray about this. So I, I prayed. But I didn't hear anything. Then just about five minutes from our church, there's another pastor there, he's old, about 60 years old. All the, almost all his kids are married. 
So he just said, ah, Pastor Molaji, I'm in um, Lekio. Let's see now. I went to see him. We're just talking, 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 talking. From talking, you know, he just said, saying rubbish, in quotes. Rubbish that what we're not talking about, because we're not talking about children. He said, ah, see my son, he's a lawyer in uh, this university in London. This one is a lawyer in uh, Amer America. Ah. He said, the way I train them, eh, but in school, God forbid. He said, for the school, God forbid. He said, the reason why is this. The Bible says, train up a child in which you go. People that send their children to boarding school, he said, for most of them, not all of them, they're trying to abrogate their responsibility to, their, to, the, to the school. He said, the second thing is that, he said, the values you've taught them between one and ten, they've not been concretized. He said, so I stayed with them. It was when they got to university and I knew they could test the value. That's when I released them. I didn't pray again, no. Just imagine you're talking with somebody about talking about building church. He just said, he just moved into something. He now asked me, hey, how did you get here? I said, I don't know. <laughs> Continue. He said, how did you get here? Because God has spoken. The question is that many of you have been in that conversation. You will not even realize that the spirit of God has spoken to you. It's like a service like this. In this service, there are different portals of the spirit that will open. And it will just come. Pa, it will be your word. It will be your word. Bah. But you can be so insensitive and not realize that the Lord just spoke to you. How does God answer prayers? Through people. Being sensitive in those conversations, in those moments is very important. You don't understand. Even when I fly, when I take a seat, I'm always asking myself, is there any reason why I'm sitting up beside this person? Because you are the one that thinks of charge. God thinks of orchestration. God thinks of what? Orchestration. This is so powerful. Oh my God. This, oh wow. This is so powerful this morning. This is so powerful this morning. I mean, just like me and Pastor DG. Just where we are in our relationship is the grace of God. Because we just met as classmates. But just orchestration. I would, you should listen to this message again. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because this is the gap. This is, you know, what I love about our teaching is that when you listen, you see the gap. Mm, you see, where have missed it? Let's pray. Stand on your feet.